Okay, good evening, all of you. So, welcome to our Monday class. And we pick from uh, where we were discussing uh, on cost of capital as at Wednesday last week. <clears throat> so, maybe to begin with, uh, here's a quick leak up of uh what we were discussing then okay so i uh, will share my screen okay so hope you can all see from your end okay so the topic that we are starting off uh was on cost of capital <clears throat> and it's that cost of capital essentially uh it's simply the we think that we can look at from a from really different perspective. One of them, of course, was uh, how much return does uh, each of the provider of capital expect? Okay, if you're going to obtain money from uh, equity shareholders, how much return do the equity shareholders or equity capital providers uh, expect at the end of the day? Okay, because they will. Okay, to them, to you as a company, uh, it is. An investment that you're making and you want and you want their money okay on the other hand the providers of capital they they are going to be investing their money for them is an investment that uh, they are making in your company so of course they need they uh, they will have an assessment of how much time that uh, they expect to get okay. therefore when it comes to you as a company assessing uh, the return that you shall be receiving uh, uh, the the costs that you'll be incurring, okay, uh, for using uh, uh, maybe equity capital, uh, for using debt capital, okay, uh, you have also, you have to consider it from the investors themselves. How much return do uh, the investors expect? Okay? At the same time, if the investor expects a, a ten percent return, they imply therefore the only way or the only time you're going to be investing in a project, okay, is if that project is to give you at least that ten percent. Okay, otherwise it will not make any. Uh, economic sense okay for you to choose an investment where the return you shall be receiving uh, is going to be lower than the cost of capital okay and this is where we uh, did define the IRR okay that the only time that as a company uh, you will be investing in a project is if the IRR is going to be at least uh, equal to uh, the cost of capital if it is if the return is going to be lower than that then definitely it does not make any sense for you to make the investment so simply uh, then we can also define the cost of capital as the minimum return okay that we should be receiving uh from the, our investment okay we also redefine the cost of capital as also the uh, cost of capital okay the, as the opportunity cost uh, of the opportunity cost of capital for the provider of capital okay and as i mentioned if for example we have two investment uh, a and b okay uh, that the investor want to uh put their money in okay they're going to choose the video with two investment okay uh, participant a want uh 10 percent return okay but if i was to invest in uh, a i'll be getting 10 percent return okay so in case i choose a i'll be getting 10 percent return if i choose b how much should i be getting if i get nine percent then why should i choose or uh, why should i invest my money project b okay that makes no sense okay uh, therefore i should i will be investing in project a because project a gives him high return okay so in case you are company c where you want the same capital okay from uh, the investor the only time they shall give you money is in case you guarantee them the minimum time they could have received if they invest as well. Okay, in this in this context, okay, uh, the ten percent return. Okay, so we can find the cost of capital as also the opportunity return the capital provider would have expected to receive uh, from an alternative investment. Okay. I think that's what we were discussing uh, the last time we met. That is last week. Okay. Then you also define that at the end of the day, okay, that uh, if we are to assess from the return point of view, okay, the cost of capital uh, from the return perspective, okay, uh, we need to say that, uh, that the investors shall be expecting a return uh, equal to uh, a minimum, okay, so definitely as yeah, the investor as uh, you shall be considering, okay, how much risk uh, your capital shall be exposed to the company and you shall be providing the capital to, okay, how much return uh, will, uh, how much risk, okay, uh, will I be exposing myself to if I was to invest in this particular business, in case I'm the holder, uh, in case I'm a private shareholder, in case you are an equity shareholder, okay, 
how much risk will I be exposing to? Okay, uh, generally, okay, assuming that we are we are operating uh, in an economy, okay, in a free uh, market economy, therefore the return that shall be receiving need to compensate for us for the risk that we are exposed to. Okay, therefore the return that you will get in as a capital provider, okay, of course has, a, has an element of the risk premium. Okay, the extra return you get because of the extra uh, risk you are exposed to. Okay, so it has uh, those two uh, contexts. Okay, but definitely, okay, since you are investing in a risky investment, therefore, by default, the mean return you shall be receiving uh, should be the return you have received if you have to choose a risk-free investment. Okay, therefore, the return is referred to as the risk-free rate of return. Okay, plus on top of that, uh, the premium for the extra okay uh, risk that you are exposed to the risk premium. Okay, I think we did discuss all this last time. Okay. So today we go to determine how much done do the one of the core uh, provider of capital uh, do get, okay, which is referred to as uh, the equity provider, okay. So equity capital provider uh, are one of the core uh, or the principal provider of capital financing uh, to the company, okay. And here more or less you're trying to from uh, raising money externally, okay. So either way, you shall also discuss if you're raising equity capital internally. Okay, but more as a key context here is raising the money uh, uh, externally. Okay. Generally, when it comes to assessing the cost of capital, okay, or the cost of equity, okay, uh, generally we are going to be using two models. Okay, there are two models that can help us in assessing. Okay, uh, how much return do the equity capital providers receive? Okay, for them investing in a company. Okay. So the two models we shall discuss is first called the dividend valuation model, and you have called the capital asset pricing model, okay, or simply referred to as CAPM. Okay, so those are the two models that uh, we shall be discussing. Okay, that will assist us in assessing uh, how much uh, uh, return, okay, how much does it cost a company for the use of uh, equity capital. Okay, those two models. Okay, the dividend valuation model and the capital asset pricing model. Okay. So in case you're doing the first model, okay, on um, the dividend valuation model, okay, if you have to start off with those two models, okay, we start off with the first one on um, the dividend valuation model, okay. So simply in this model on um, the dividend valuation model, okay, the key thing is that uh, we are trying to determine if you are an equity shareholder, how much return will you be, or in what form, okay, does your return comes in. Okay. And the return that you get as an investor, uh, of course, as an equity investor, is going to commonly going to be two. Okay, we have the dividend and you have the capital gains. So the return that you receive as an equity shareholder is going to be in two way. Okay, so let me just share my white board. Okay, okay, that you see that the return you receive as an equity shareholder comes in two forms. Okay, so first you receive okay, so the return that you receive as an equity shareholder, we have the dividend, okay. I think we did discuss in the first topic, and you have the capital gain, okay. We have the dividend, and you have the capital gain, okay. This is more or less how uh, all the equity returns, or the equity, the return the equity shareholder uh, do receive, okay. The dividend simply is how much dividend we get over a given time period. Okay, capital gain is simply uh, what is the increase uh, in the value of the share, okay, from period A to period B. Okay, so mid is P1 minus P0. Okay, but generally, in case you to assume that the equity shareholder, okay, uh, that you don't dispose of the share, okay, you don't sell off the uh, that particular equity share. To be therefore, the capital gain is actually going to be unrealized. Okay, so this component component is going to be unrealized. Okay, why? Because you still hold it. You still hold on it. Okay, so therefore, you don't. It it doesn't actually actualize. Okay. Uh, that's game more or less of a nearest corporate, okay? And then when it comes to assessing, therefore, uh, under the model, okay, the actual gains that you, be shown, you will be receiving as an investor, okay, uh, assuming you hold this investor infinity, okay, there's going to be only between to be the dividend, okay? And that's why in the model, okay, we simply refer to as the dividend valuation model. to try to value, is try to make an evaluation of the value of the share uh, purely on the dividend, okay? It's purely uh, going to be based on the dividend, okay? Okay. Therefore, the model okay is pegged on what we refer to as uh, the fundamental theory of valuation. Okay, so the dividend valuation model. Okay, so here the dividend valuation model. Okay, valuation. Okay, model. Okay, 
uh, is pegged on what we refer to as it is pegged on the fundamental theory of valuation. It's pegged on the fundamental theory of valuation. Theory of valuation, which I think we already discussed so far. Okay, uh, this theory should not be new. Okay, because we already discussed this together. Okay, uh, what we refer to as the fundamental uh, theory of valuation. Okay. And what does this theory say? Okay. The theory just tells us that at the end of the day, okay, if you want to assess uh, the market value of a financial instrument, okay, if you want to assess uh, the market value of a financial instrument, don't forget, equity share is a financial instrument. Okay, I think you've done this in accounts already. Okay, if you want to assess the, if you want to assess The market value of financial instrument is simply you have to consider what return do the provider get out of it. Okay, what return do the provider get out of it? What receipts? Okay, what cash flows uh, comes to the investor of the person who did buy that particular financial asset? Okay, and since this is an equity share, uh, don't forget the only return you get is purely in form of the dividend. Okay, so therefore the value of therefore the equity share, okay, is therefore pegged on the dividend that the company do pay to the equity share. Share, share the providers. Okay, so generally, uh, that is uh, what did what makes the biggest contribution. Okay, towards the value of an equity share. Okay, okay. Don't forget, as I mentioned, the fundamental theory of relation simply say that the market value of a financial instrument is simply the sum total uh, of uh, is simply the total uh, of all the equity that you do get. Okay. My audio seems to have issues, so let me just confirm uh, from someone whether you can all hear me. So I hope Luke is here. Let me check him out. Mosoti. Mosoti, can you hear me very well? Mosoti. Mosoti. Yes. You can hear me. Yes. Okay, fair enough. Okay, thank you. Okay, I hope all the all the issue on the output has been solved. So you see that the fundamental theory of evolution. Okay, this is this theory. Okay, this dividend evaluation theory. Okay, upon which we can use to assess uh, what uh, we can use to assess the cost of equity. Okay. Is pegged on the fundamental theory of evolution. Okay, so it's like uh, two theories in two, two theories into one. Okay, but the market value of financial instrument. Okay, just repeat the market value P not. Okay, is equal to uh, simply the sum total, the sum of present value of all the dividend. Okay, in this context, there's an equity share. Okay. The return you receive uh, in case you are an equity shareholder is simply the dividend. So the sum of the present value of all the dividends. Okay. That you'll be getting as an equity shareholder over the life of that particular uh, equity share is simply uh, uh, the present of the sum of those present value. Uh, therefore, will give us an estimation okay, of what should be uh, the market value of that equity share. Okay. So, I guess I have to go back to our notes. Okay. So, let me go back to our notes okay, on the dividend valuation theory. Okay. So that this based on the fundamental theory of valuation, okay, which I think I mentioned, uh, simply say that the market value of a financial instrument, the market value uh, of a security, okay, is simply the sum total of the present value of all the cash flows, okay, that the investor, okay, it shall be receiving over the life of that particular instrument, okay. So the dividend valuation model is based on the fundamental theory of valuation, okay. So the fundamental, okay. So it's based on the fundamental theory of valuation. Okay. The fundamental theory of valuation. And then simply, we can see that the fundamental theory of valuation is simply uh, the market value of the instrument is the sum of the present value of all the cash flows, okay, of all the receipts, okay, that you'll be receiving if you're an investor in that particular uh, equity share, okay, that particular instrument. In this case, in this context, the equity share. Uh, simply is only referred to as uh, the fundamental theory of evolution. As I was mentioned, the P naught, the market value of this equity share, is simply the sum of the present value of all the dividends that particular equity share shall be yielding on behalf of the investor. Okay. That's uh, the P naught. 
Okay, and that's simply is a deviant evaluation model tagged on the fundamental uh, theory of valuation. Okay. So here, of course, one of the key assumptions we are making, okay, and we shall mention the assumption later on, okay, is that the companies that you're going to be trying to assess what is their cost of equity, okay. Uh, uh, we assume, okay, that these equity shares uh, do pay the dividend, okay, they do pay the dividend. Because if you assume that this, uh, the company don't pay dividend, then you can't apply the theory, okay? Then you can't be able to apply the model, okay? So the first key assumption is that, uh, that you'll be using, okay? Is that the companies that you're dealing with, the company you're, you're trying to assess uh, what is uh, their cause of equity, okay? And that they do pay the dividends, okay? The key, key, key assumption uh, that shall be assuming, okay? Over and above this assumption that you just made is that uh, over and above this assumption they have just made, okay, is that the shares would not be disposed. Okay, therefore, uh, the only return, the only actual cash flow you'll be getting as an investor is a dividend. The capital gain it is not it is not actualized, okay. Therefore, that's why more or less we're going to uh, strip it off, okay, uh, from our, uh, our, our model. Okay. We can go ahead and split this model into two. Okay, we can go ahead and split this model into two. Uh, you have the case of no growth in dividend, and you have the case of growth in dividend. Okay, so don't forget the first thing we have assumed is that this company uh, they do pay dividend. Okay, so because otherwise, if they don't pay the dividend, then you cannot be able to apply the model. Okay, so they pay the dividend, then we go ahead and split the model further. Okay, let me actually just have a mind map. Okay, so that it becomes clear uh, to you. Okay, let me share my board again. Okay, uh, so that it can become a bit clear to all of you. It's a great word here. So you see that when it comes to estimating the cost of equity, okay, we can use two models. Okay. So now the first model is a dividend uh, valuation model. Okay, dividend uh, valuation model. Okay, and you can also have the capital asset pricing model. Capital asset pricing model. Similar to the so-called CAPM. Okay, so there are two models you can use when it comes to assessing uh, the cost of equity. Okay, in the case of the dividend valuation model, we are saying it is pegged on the fundamental. Okay, it is pegged on the fundamental uh, theory of valuation. Okay, it is pegged on the fundamental theory of valuation. Okay, and here we can further split the theory into two. Okay, we have mentioned that in case uh, here we assume first of all is that there is growth in dividend, okay? so it can apply the model. We can assume the first case in the case of no growth. Okay, so there's a case of no growth in the dividend. You can assume here a uh, case of growth. Okay, case of growth in dividend. So simply you say that the growth in dividend, okay, so G okay is equal to zero. Okay. And uh, however, here G is not equal to zero. Okay, that's so simply is how we're trying to split the two models. Okay, case of growth in dividend and the case of no growth in dividend. Okay. So we can split this model further into two categories: case of growth and the case of no growth in dividend. Okay. So let's go back to our notes. <clears throat> so if we have to begin. Before you go to the two cases, okay, the case of growth and the case of uh, no growth in dividend, okay, so let's go back to the assumptions that uh, we do apply under the dividend evolution model, okay, so the assumptions are, okay, you should make sure that first thing is that this company pays a dividend, okay, that this company do pay dividend, okay, okay, I hope it's Okay, it's not one of the one I've mentioned here. So actually, you can write it as point number five. Okay, is that the first thing or one of the key assumption is this growth in of the company uh, pay dividend. Okay, so companies in the market uh, do pay dividend. Company uh, do pay dividend. Okay, that's one of the key assumption of the model. The company do pay the dividend okay? because if they don't pay the dividend, then you can't be able to value the company. Okay, then the growth of dividend is constant if uh, during the period. If there's growth, okay, don't forget to say that they can have two scenarios, no growth or growth. So in case there's uh, no, there's growth in dividend, okay, then uh, the period, okay, to infinity, okay, okay, this apply more towards the period to infinity, okay, so period to infinity, 
period to infinity is if there's growth in dividend, then it's going to be is a constant. Okay, so this G is a constant. Okay, so in case it's going to be a growth, then that's G is going to be a constant. Okay, so you can have scenarios where the G, okay, or the growth in dividend uh, uh, can be what call the super normal growth period. Okay, so just here to uh, make a further comment on it. Okay, so there could be scenarios where the G is not constant. Okay, so not always the case. Okay, so during the super normal, what if that was uh, the super uh, normal growth period, super normal growth period, okay, then essentially G is not going to be a constant. Okay, so G uh, is not a constant. Okay, is not a constant. Okay, so during those period. Okay, but if or during the period to infinity, okay, then G must always be a constant. Okay, so G must always be a constant uh, for the period to infinity. Okay. Okay, the equation of turn is also going to be a constant. Okay, uh, what we thought was the cost of equity. Okay, so the cost of equity or the required term, okay, must always be constant, which you're going to find simply here as R is uh, RE. Okay, so cost of equity. Okay, so if, for example, we get the cost of equity in year one, okay, I'm trying to explain this second point. In year one, we get the return to be 10%. Then this is going to be assumed to be 10% all the way to the period to infinity. Okay, all the way to period to infinity. Okay, if we assume that. Uh, if you assume, okay, sorry, if you assume that uh, that the growth, okay, if in year one the growth is ten percent, but the return to the provider of capital, which in this case context is the cost of equity, if it is ten percent uh, today, then it's going to be ten percent all the way to infinity, okay. That's a call. That's what this particular second point is trying to explain to us, okay. The required term of is going to be constant uh, all the way to period to infinity, okay. Actually, uh, point number five, the one had mentioned, actually, it is point number three, okay, that the DPS is greater than zero. Okay, it is. So let me just grab off this <clears throat> point number five. Okay, it is now our point uh, number four, number three, okay, that the DPS is greater than zero. Because otherwise, if that doesn't apply, uh, then uh, the, uh, you can't apply the model. Okay, you can't apply the model where the dividend is equal to uh, less than zero. Okay, it's going to be yeah, less than zero, more or less, okay? And of course, uh, the cost of equity is going to be uh, greater than the growth rate, okay? But the cost of equity, okay, RE, okay, uh, must, must be greater than the growth in equity, okay? These apply to the period infinity, okay? It can be a scenario where uh, in the period uh, during the super normal, okay? So let me come back here, okay? So during this one period, okay, uh, there could be instance where the cost of equity is less than the growth. Okay, however, for the period to infinity, okay, so here is for period to infinity, okay, for period to infinity, okay, uh, the G must always be less than the cost of equity. Okay, that is a must. Okay, for us we to apply uh, the model. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, later on as we, we go through uh, the material, uh, you'll see why when the formula apply. Okay. I'll come back to it a uh, lot to, to re emphasize okay, on why the point of four need to, need to, to apply. Okay? And the assumptions of our dividend growth model, okay? the assumptions of our dividend growth model. Okay? <clears throat> okay. So, in case we have to start off with our, if I go back to uh, our whiteboard, okay, you can go back to our whiteboard here, okay. Uh, we say that you can split uh, the model into two, okay. We have the case of growth in dividend, okay, and you have case, case of no growth in dividend, okay, and you have the case of growth in dividend, okay. Uh, so in case you have to begin with the case of no growth in dividend, so we begin this we our first, okay. Uh, we assume the, and this one will be our second, okay. So in case we have to assume uh, the case of no growth in the dividend, then uh, what do we do? So here we can therefore what how, how the model shall be like. Okay. So the first thing is the case of no growth in the dividend. Okay. So first of all, we go back to a model. Okay. Okay. Before I if we go through these notes here. Okay. Let me go and discuss the model a bit in detail. Okay. So let me go back to my board for like two minutes. <clears throat> Okay, so here we are saying that as per the fundamental theory of evolution, okay, so this is as per the fundamental, okay, uh, theory, 
okay, the market value of the financial instrument, P0. Okay, so here I want to represent P0 as a market value of a financial instrument. Okay. It is gain bigger as the sum of present value, okay, of all the future receipts, okay, of all the cash flows. So since we are dealing with an equity share, okay, uh, the cash flow, since we're dealing with an equity share, okay, so here the cash flow is simply the dividend. Okay, so the cash flow is simply the dividend. Okay, and we can already mention uh, why we don't include the capital gain. So simply, uh, we are trying to determine the present value of the dividend. Therefore, having that in mind, therefore, and the P not the market value of the equity share is gain with the sum of present value. Okay, of the dividends, sum of present value of the dividends. Okay, therefore, you can say therefore. Since we are assuming that the G, okay, the growth in dividend is equal to zero, okay, don't get here, the first case is the case of no growth in dividend, okay, the case of no growth in dividend. So G is equal to zero, okay, therefore, we can go ahead and say that the dividend that was paid, okay, uh, in 2010, for example, is equal to dividend that was paid in 2011, is equal to dividend that was paid in the year 2019. Okay. okay, there is no growth in the dividend. So the dividend uh, is a constant, it means to be a constant. Okay. If you remember, when it comes to uh, the topic we were discussing on how to get uh, time value of money, okay, as you can see, the dividend D20, D2010, uh, D2011, here D, I mean the dividend, okay, so D2010, uh, D2011, D2014, this is a constant, okay. And this is a constant to infinity, okay? This is a constant to infinity. Why? Don't forget to say we are assuming, okay, that the investor hold this particular equity share all the way to infinity, to into the foreseeable future, okay? So therefore, the dividend is going to be the same, okay? It's a constant irrespective of when it is paid, okay? All the way to uh, infinity. Therefore, so the dividend D is a constant, okay? And this constant is to infinity, okay? If you recall, okay, you know, therefore, the present value, okay, of an annuity. So since this dividend is not growing, okay, it is an annuity, okay, therefore, uh, the present value of an annuity, okay, which I think we discussed to infinity, okay, is simply the annuity. Let me just get someone to participate, okay. So layer. So let me unmute you, layer. How do you get the present value of an annuity to infinity? Leia. Leia, hey. It seems to be a bit distracted for now. Susan. So let me unmute you, Susan. Susan. Yes. Yes, how do we get present value of an annuity to infinity, assuming that this annuity does not grow? It's given us present value of annuity is equal to annuity. Annuity times present value. Okay, annuity times present think, value. Mm -hmm. PV, AF. Mm -hmm. So R percent N years, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Susan. Let me get someone else to to critique Susan. Winnie, Winnie Mariti, I want to unmute you. Winnie has is Winnie. So Winnie. Winnie, I want to unmute you. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. So, do you, think, do you think this formula is okay? So, you want to get the present value, okay? I think. think hmm? uh -huh. Sorry, I Winnie. think the value that do you hear me? Yes, yes, I, I can hear you. I think the present value is mm -hmm. the amount, the dividends that 
you're going to get yes. dividends mm -hmm. times the present value annuity factor. So you, you agree with her? Yeah, I think I agree with her. Okay. With the dividend. Okay. So let me get someone yeah. else. <clears throat> Ebontane. Ebontane, I want to unmute you then. You let. Do you think the two formulas are correct, Ebontane? I was thinking yes, we'll yes, get yes. Dividend, mm -hmm. dividend divided by one plus arrow divided by arrow. So, so you think the, the present value should be equal to? Dividend divided by R sings. Dividend divided by the, R. By R sings that the sings is constant. Sings the dividend is constant. Yes. And I agree. Don't forget here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ebontane. Don't forget here. Okay, let me actually list some of these. So. So don't forget, okay, that here we are dealing with a case of uh, the dividend is to infinity, okay? The dividend is to infinity, okay? So the dividend is to infinity. However, it is not growing, okay? This div is not growing. So simply the present value of that dividend is the dividend you divide by R, okay? Don't forget the present value of an annuity that is not growing is annuity we divide by R, okay? In this context, the annuity, okay, is a dividend. The R is the cost of equity, okay? So the R is the cost of equity, R here, okay? The cost of equity return to the equity shareholder, okay? Therefore, the market value, okay? Having that in mind, okay? The market value of an equity share, therefore, P0, okay? So P0 is going to be the dividend we divide by RE. It's simply divided by RE, okay? Where the D is there, okay? Where, where D0, I'm going to D, uh, is equal to the dividend, okay? P naught is equal to uh, the market value, okay, the market price per share, okay? The market value, market value of a share or the market price, okay? And RE is the cost of equity, okay? Is the cost of equity, okay? And that's how you get the market value of an equity share, okay? Applying the fundamental, applying going back to uh, our fundamental theory of evaluation, going back to the fundamental theory of evaluation, okay? But the market value of an equity share is going to be equal to the dividend, okay? So D, we divide by RE, the cost of equity, okay? That gives, therefore, uh, the market value of the equity share, okay? Don't forget, I mean, uh, 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 this positive point of discussion was how would we get therefore the cost of equity? Okay, how do we get now the cost of equity at the RE? We have it here now. Okay, so simply if you know the market value of the, of the equity share and you know the dividend the company normally pay, then you can get the cost of equity by simply making uh, the RE here, okay, our subject of uh, the equation. So RE, therefore, will be given us uh, the dividend or D naught, you simply divide by the market value of that equity share, we multiply by 100%. And that's how you get, therefore, the cost of equity. If you use the dividend valuation model, okay, that's get the cost of equity under the case of uh, no growth, okay. I hope the model was quite clear uh, when it comes to estimating the cost of equity, okay. Question on that more on that particular on the first case, and the case of no growth in the dividend. Okay, so you don't forget in case you have a question, uh, you raise your hand, okay, or simply you do it on the chat, okay. So, assuming, yes, Ebontane, you seem to have a question, so let me unmute you, okay. So, Ebontane, mm, go back to you. Yes, Ebontane, question. So, is, it, is this formula the same as um, um, the one you, you showed us up of dividends divided by market price? Dividend market price. Yes, it is. It's the same formula. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll, so the, the the growth here comes. The growth is in the sense of 
um, um, annuity not growing? So here, the annuity is not is one. It is not growing. So it's a constant. The day twenty ten year, for example. Okay, sorry. So the day twenty ten year. Okay. And the D2011, the D for 2010, for 2011, 2012, all that in feeling is a constant. So there's no growth here. Okay. That's the first case here. Is that the case where there's no growth in the dividend? Okay. And then we shall discuss the growth a lot. But for now, okay, we assume uh, there's no growth in the dividends. Okay. It's clear. Yeah. Okay, fair now. Uh, Okay, and that's how we estimate the cost of equity uh, in the case of no growth in the dividends. Okay, we have cost of equity, uh, D naught, here the cost of equity. Here the cost of equity is D, we divide by P naught. Okay, where P naught is the market price per share, where D is the dividend. Okay, but this D is not growing, it's constant, it's fixed. Okay, okay so I can go back to our notes there. <coughs> Okay, so here in this other context, we are representing or representing the cost of equity as K. Okay, cost. Okay, so one same thing. In our context before, we are using R. So D naught we divide by P naught. Okay, therefore, the cost of equity or the return to the equity shareholders. Okay. Okay, I hope it's very clear. <clears throat> if it is. And don't forget, I think we should have a later on, okay, that P naught is on what we refer to as the X dividend basis, okay, on X basis, okay. Uh, what we want to, why well, it must always be on X basis is, it's not always that the share, what does, actually, what does the X dividend share price imply? They imply uh, the value of the share without the dividend, okay. What would be the market value of this equity share if it didn't have the dividend, okay, or call in the normal trading situation, okay. Uh, so since we don't always expect, okay, uh, the company pays dividend every week, which it doesn't happen, okay, if anything they pay once in a year, okay, or twice in a year, okay, therefore, in normal condition, what is the market value of the share without those shares, okay, that refer to, without those dividends, okay, that refer to as X dividend, and that's why you always use the X, okay, because we want to estimate, okay, we don't want the share price to be distorted, okay, by something that is going to happen only once in a year, okay, so you want to estimate what the share price without those distortion. Without the dividend, okay, that's why you always use uh, the X dividend, not come dividend, X dividend, okay. If, for example, just to uh, to refer to the exam, if, for example, the truth, this is the market price, this is the market value of the share, okay, but uh, there is no mention as to whether it is X, okay, or it is come dividend, okay, so I assume it is X dividend, okay, unless it is. Explicit thought, okay, that we're using the term dividend or this share price is calm dividend, then we assume always that it is X dividend, okay. Now it's very clear. And don't forget, if for example you want to get the X dividend, you, you have been given calm dividend, okay, but now you want to apply the X dividend, you want to use the X dividend, okay, what do we do, okay, just remind you, okay, and we'll get here, <coughs> calm dividend, okay, which I think we didn't mention, okay. Uh, come dividend share price, okay. So come dividend P naught is equal to X dividend P naught, okay. Plus, of course, the dividend per share, okay. Plus the dividend per share, okay. So, if, therefore, in case you want this is X dividend, this is not minus. I hope I don't want you to get confused, okay. So, so this is X, this is X a dividend share price, okay, plus the DPS, the dividend per share. So in case if we want to get the X dividend, there is going to be a count dividend uh, simply minus the DPS, okay. If you want to get uh, the X dividend, and you'll be you're assuming that uh, you'll be told that uh, the share price, you'll be told that they are uh, the share the share is trained with the dividend, come dividend, and now you want to work to, you want to work backwards uh, to get the X dividend, okay. Okay, and that's on how oh, we do get the X dividend share price. Okay, so here I have two examples. Okay, which I want you to we go through the question one. Okay, so go through it in the next one minute, then we answer it together. Question one. Okay. 
Okay, so for now, just go through question one. Okay, I hope we have gone through the question. Okay, and we, have, and we can attempt uh, it together. Okay. So this question is asking, a company has paid dividends of that sense for many years, okay? The company expects to continue paying uh, dividends at this level in the future. So there's no uh, any prospect that there will be growth in the dividend uh, going forward, okay? So the company current share price is 1.5x dividends, okay? As mentioned, in case, is, in case it is come dividends, then of course you have to work backwards uh, to, get the, to get the x dividends, okay? But in this context, okay, we already told it's x dividends. Okay. So you may calculate the cost of equity. Okay, so let me go to my board. Okay, having all those facts. <clears throat> okay, so if we told that here the dividend, okay, is that the sense? If we told the period, the x dividend is equal to one point five over dollar. Okay, so we now to get the cost of equity. Okay, so therefore the cost of equity, applying the model, you said re is equal to uh, D divided by P naught, uh, we express this as a percent, okay? To give us therefore uh, 30 cents, okay, or 0 0.3 over dollar divided 1.5, and we express this as a percent uh, to give us the cost of equity, okay? And that's how we estimate uh, the cost of equity under uh, the case of no growth in dividend, okay? So let me get an answer from one of you. Faith. Faith, I want to unmute you. So, Faith Kisu. Yes. What do you get to be the cost of equity? Uh, 45. For, for 0 0.4. 0 in, 0.45. In percent? Oh, 45. 45%. Yes. Yeah. 45%. It looks quite high, but anyway, let's let me check from someone else to check on the answer validity. Okay, Maureen. Maureen, where did Maureen go? I don't see her somewhere. Maureen Kwamboka, I want to unmute you. What do you get to be the cost of equity? 20%. 20 percent. 20 percent, yeah. Uh, okay, because I was doubting this answer. So let's check 20 percent and maybe just a final confirmation. 20 percent. Alex. I want to unmute you, Alex. 20%. 20%. Okay, fair enough. Then I think uh, for 5%, uh, I don't know who that was, who it was, who gave them for 5%. So we get 20% uh, uh, to be the cost of equity. 20% to be the cost of equity. Okay. Now, what does 20% mean? Okay. It means, therefore, that for every dollar, okay, for every dollar, the company shall be asking from uh, this equity shareholder they will be expecting 20 cents return per year. Okay, That's what 20% means here. Okay? But for every dollar, the company shall be requesting uh, the equity shareholders to give it. Okay, uh, The company must be willing to give them okay, a 20 cent return. Okay? That's what 20% imply. Okay? And that's simply how you estimate uh, the uh, cost of equity under the case of no growth in the dividend. Okay? So going back to our notes, I think we had a second question. Now this one is slightly, okay, a bit challenging, slightly, but not too much, okay. Uh, so go through it, okay, in the next maybe two minutes, uh, then hope to ask one of you to uh, do it for us, okay. So question two, okay, so do it in the next two minutes. Okay, I presuppose that you have gone through the question and you have been able to do some calculations okay, uh, on it. So I want to ask one of you to do it for us. Okay. 
So let me get one of you. Someone, I hope you have been able to do it. David. David. Yes, sir. I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. Yeah. Okay. How many more minutes should I give you? One minute. Uh, give me, give me three. Three minutes. Yes. Okay. Three minutes then. Mm -hmm. So, David, I presuppose you have done something. Not a, not a must for you to get the answer, but hoping you have just done something. Yes. You have done something. Yes, I've done something. Okay, fair enough. I want to share my screen, then you can uh, do it here on my screen itself. So let me share my screen, my board. Let me rub it. So, yeah. So David, yes. From your screen, can you see an icon written and to annotate? Can you see that that icon from your side? On top there, you annotate. Uh, no, no, no. I can't see it. Well, I mean, I don't know if someone seen it. But generally, there's an icon there on top written annotate. Uh, no, no, no. There's just uh, an arrow on a box. You are moving the arrow. No, on top there, on top there, on your controls. Can you see? Or maybe in the bottom. You can be there on top or on the bottom. Where you mute the video, where you start the video. Can you see it? No, no, no. It's not there. It's not there. I can only see st mute, start video, participant chat, share screen, and record. Okay. Uh huh. Then, uh, can you be able to share your screen? Can you do your, the math on your screen? I wanted, I wanted to participate by you doing it. Mm, what if I just tell you how you do it and then you write? Okay. I'll, okay. Don't worry then. Let, let me just do it then. Uh, then you. Okay. Yeah, let me just do it then. Because I wanted you to do it on the screen so that all the all the other can also be able to uh, see your screen. Any, anyway, don't worry. Okay. So David, uh, so David, okay, tell me the step then. <clears throat> uh, from the question, you are told that uh, the dividends is four point zero times. Okay, so from the question, we told that the dividend is uh, dividend cover is four times. Uh huh. Sure. And then the peanut is uh, fifty million dollars. And the peanut is fifty million dollars. Yes, it is. And then you are having an after tax profit of twenty million. Then you have an after tax profit of twenty million. Yes, yes, sure. Yeah. So I tried to use the I tried to use the other formula where cost of uh, uh, cost of capital. Okay, so cost of capital RE uh, uh, is equal is equal to dividend. Or, uh, no, I tried to use the formula where uh, sorry, the, the other formula where P naught that mm, is the P. market value. So P naught. Let me get this here. Okay, so P naught is equal to uh, is equal to dividend over cost of capital. Dividend cost of capital. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you uh, uh, I, 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 the peanut will be 50 million. So the peanut is 50 million. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the dividend is 4.0 times. So it's 4.4 4 times. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then now we are looking for the RE, the cost of capital. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the cost of capital. Uh -huh, sure. Yeah, so I try to do a simultaneous equation. Okay, so uh, you divide you divide four four times by by RE by cost of equity. Yeah. Okay, so hope 
have I, have I, have I done the right way from your side? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. So, so okay. maybe the cost of capital can be X. So the cost so can be X. So therefore, yeah. uh, four to four divided by fifty million. Yeah. In percent. Sure. Yeah. And you get how much? Uh, I'm getting. Uh, uh, 0. Uh, uh, 0. 0.0008. So 0. 0.008 percent. Uh, another zero. So there's zero that way. Yeah. That way. Percent. Yeah, sure. Ah, okay, fair enough. Okay. That was the David's attempt. Okay. So thank you, David. Let's check someone else. Okay. Thank you, thank you, David. Okay. So Esther this as to summer okay so let's say you've gone your hand was up and let me try it on to yes let me try it on mute you yes esther um maybe i can just i can see what i attempted okay come closer to your mic yeah sorry can yes. you hear me yes yes um so i did the the did dividend cover method where mm -hmm. I used the, according to the ratios, mm. I, I say dividend cover is equals to earnings per share over dividend per share. Earnings per share, earnings per share, divide per share. That way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, mm. to get earnings per share, you... Earnings per share. It's earnings after uh, it, it is. Sorry, it's earnings attributed it's to shareholders. equity shareholders. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Over the number of ordinary shares. Or the number of shares, yes. So to get the it is, yes. I did the 50 million, which is the market capitalization. So the minus the yeah. So fifty million minus minus the twenty million, which is tax. Minus twenty million, which is tax. Yeah. Okay. How, where do you get the tax? Just a minute. So there was tax. Uh, oh no no wait. After tax profits, it's twenty million. Okay. So. Let's use the 20 million then. Cool. Yeah, so 20 million. So I let me okay, so let me clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so 20 million here. Yeah. So 20 million. Mm -hmm. Divided by the number of ordinary shares, which would be one million. So one million. Therefore the earning per share. It's twenty. Twenty dollars, okay. Twenty, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then coming back to the formula. Yes. Uh, you've been given the dividend cover is four. So yes, it's four. So four. To, mm -hmm, is equals to 20. 20 million. Of uh, the X, which is you're looking for the DPS. Oh, the DPS. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the DPS. 20 divided by four. You would get five. So you get five to the dividend. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, then you do the 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 cost of equity formula, which is so, cost of equity. Are is equals to d naught over p naught. D naught over p naught. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So the d naught is five over mm -hmm. the. Yeah. Over. over the the x dividend, which is one point five. Which is one point five. Yeah. 1.5. Yeah. So the market value is it 1.5? Uh, okay, I don't know. <laughs> if I remember, 1.5 was the for question one. Oh, sorry, sorry, yes. sorry. Uh -huh. um, okay, I think I've lost it, but we can continue from there. Yes, yes, but I think so far you have you've done quite a quite quite a good a good work until that point. But I agree you've done very well. So someone pick from where she has got stuck. Someone is uh, Louisa. So let me unmute you. Louisa.
Louisa, your hand was up. What happened? I think I didn't unmute you. Let me check again. Louisa, your hand was up. Yes, I had put my hand up. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. <clears throat> yes, I'm on the same page with, with is it Esther? Up yes. to that point, I got the mm -hmm. dividend per share as five. Yes. Then now we need to get the market price per share. And we know the formula, uh -huh. market price per share. So market capitalization is yes. number of shares times the market price per share. So market so, is equal to the number of shares times? The market price per share. Times the market price per share, true. Uh -huh. So we have the market capitalization as 50 million so 50. and the number of shares as 1 million. As 1 million. Yes. So okay. we got the MPS as 50. MPS to be equal to 50. Yes. Yes. So no. going back to the cost of capital equation, yes. um, it's K is equals to D naught over P naught. No. We now have the D naught as five. But five, and yes. The, and the P naught as 50. That's 50. Times 100. Times 100. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So okay. I got, I think, 10. 10%. Yes. 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 And that's very really right. So the cost of equity for this example is 10%. Oh, that's very really good, Lisa. Thank you. Yes, that's how you get the cost of equity. Okay, uh, uh, Daniel, don't worry. Okay, I think maybe uh, you missed maybe what you, Daniel you missed here. Okay, uh, let me just to correct you. Okay, so so Daniel, maybe what you did miss here was uh, four times. Okay, so uh, four times uh, is not a dividend. Okay, it's just telling you uh, how many times can the company be able to pay off the dividend? You can pay off the dividend company uh, four times. Okay, so of course uh, uh, the dividend cover here. Okay, was very light. Okay, so the until forty DPS we got five. Okay, so maybe here. Okay. I can't remember the password. Uh, so here, the P not I think, is where she got stuck. Okay, but so far that was quite uh, impressive. Okay, so Louisa came and helped, uh, did help us in getting the market value, uh, which is fifty. Okay, which is uh, very light. Okay, and we get the cost of equity to be equal to the DPS five, which obtained from uh, this point. We divide by fifty the market price share. Okay, uh, to give us a cost of equity of ten percent. Yes, that's how you're meant to have, have done that question. Okay, simply that's how you meant to do it. Okay, when it's meeting, therefore, uh, the cost of equity. Okay, so you can you can check as to uh, the others what you didn't get. Okay, if in the case of question, of course, you let me know. Okay, but that's how we do get uh, the cost of equity. Okay, Amolo, you have a question. Okay, so let me unmute you, Amolo. <clears throat> yes, Amolo. Okay, so my question is yes. what's the difference between the market price per share yes. which we got as fifty yes. and the one dollar ordinary the one dollar one dollar ordinary share price something of the sort what appears in the balance sheet? Is it the one dollar or the fifty? I don't understand the difference between ah, the two. Okay. So what what the, what you're asking is that uh, what appears the balance sheet and what we have as a market value. What's the difference between the two of them? Yes. Uh, essentially, okay, when it comes to preparing uh, the accounts, okay, you prepare the accounts on the book value. You don't prepare the accounts on the market value basis. Okay. Uh, so what appears okay. is the book value per share. Okay. What was the price? When the company was issuing the shares in the market, at what price were they asking the shareholder to pay for them? Okay. So that's called the book yeah. value. Okay. But now it does not mean the share price remains sticky. Okay, the share price is sticky at that point. Okay, they can increase, they can decrease over time. Okay, uh, based on the market phenomena. Okay, so here, for example, this company maybe they issued the shares in 2010 and they issued one share for one. Okay, but now 10 yeah. years later, the share price has increased okay, from one dollar all the way to fifty dollars. Okay, so the fifty okay is the current value. If you have to go to the market, how much would you be paying to get one share? You pay fifty dollars, but in twenty ten, when the company was issuing this share, so how much were they yeah. paying? So we're paying one dollar then. Okay, in twenty ten. That's the key difference. Yeah. yeah. So the extra amount is what goes to the balance sheet as share premium. No, no, no. What goes to the balance sheet as share premium? Okay, let me let me just show you. Okay, uh, so let me. 
Yeah. Okay. So the share premium is okay. In some sense, a difference. If, for example, the company issued shares in 2010 and they issued shares at let's say, uh, so the shares were done in the issue was done in 2010. It was done for one dollar. Then in the 20, yeah. the company issued other shares, but the shares were issued not at one dollar. Okay, but were issued for example yeah. at like two point five dollars. Okay, this is an example. Yeah, there are two issues one yeah. done in 2010 and another one done in 2012 of the same class. Yeah. Okay, now here you know the share were issued at a different price so one dollar and 2.5. Yeah. So the 1.5, the extra 1.5, okay, sometimes because what fact was the share premium. Okay, this is called okay. goes to the share premium. Okay, the share are issued at a premium from their book value. Okay, this goes to the share premium account. Okay, the 50, okay. The fifty yep. minus the fifty minus one, which is forty nine, it doesn't yeah. appear in the balance sheet. It doesn't appear at all in the balance sheet. It doesn't appear at all in the balance sheet. Is it is it clear, Amol? Okay. It's clear. The, 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 the equity of the no, no the equity of the guy who buys this share at fifty. It yes. remains one. He can only claim one from the company and not the fifty. If the company was closed down, if, was, if the company was closed down and they're paid uh, based on uh, how much you hold, you'll be paid. If, for example, one company, the company can only be able to recover, can only be able to pay you one dollar. They pay you one dollar. That's what it means, actually. They wouldn't pay you the 50. They wouldn't pay you 50. 50 is if you have to go, you have to, go to the market and say, I want to share in this particular company. The market will pay you $50. If the company was down the company will pay new based on what is the receipt, what is remaining. And the company pays every they pay the taxes, they pay uh, the employees, the salaries. What remains is what you get paid, not one, neither is it 50, but you get paid on the residue. What remains, okay? Okay, okay, yeah, it's it's clear, it's clear. Ah, okay, fair now, okay, well, that's good, okay, and that's what you're meant to have done in that particular. Uh, question okay to estimate the cost of equity in this case 10 percent okay that for every uh one dollar okay for every one uh one dollar uh the company need to be paid 10 cents okay uh, for each of the dollars they do receive from these equity uh, shareholders okay and that's what we estimate the cost of equity under uh, the case of no growth in dividends okay okay then you can go back to our notes <clears throat> Okay, so you're done with two questions, uh, more or less to uh, prepare us, okay? And then the next context is called the case of growth in dividend, okay? Don't forget, as we are discussing, uh, we did split uh, the uh, model two, the case of growth and the case of no growth in dividend, okay? Case of growth and the case of no growth in the dividend, okay? We are done, the case of no growth, okay? Now you can concentrate on the case of growth in the dividend, okay? Let me share my board. Okay? To discuss in detail, okay, in the case of growth in the dividend, okay. So you have said that market value, okay. Uh, first of all, the G in this context is not equal to zero, like in our previous example we just discussed, okay. So here the G is not equal to zero. The dividends are growing, okay. So here we we'll first assume that uh, there's growth in the dividend, and the growth in the dividend is fixed, okay, is a constant, and this constant is a uh, fixed to infinity. If we got the case, therefore, we go back to our how we get the time value of money. Okay, how do we get the time value of money? Okay, the time value of money, uh, we see it is given us okay, the present value. Okay, don't forget the return or the cash flows the holder is getting is in form of dividend, nothing else it is in form of the dividend. Okay, therefore, you can see the present value. Okay, or simply let me say the market value is here, the market value. Our equity share, okay, we say it's going to the present value of all the dividends we shall be receiving, okay. So, present value, the sum, present value of the dividends, okay. So, since here the dividends are growing, okay, don't forget, you can see that the dividend paid in the year 2010, for example, okay, is equal to the dividend that was paid in the year 2011. However, don't forget that 2011 has grown now, okay, it has grown by, for example, 10% or 8%, whatever the growth rate is equal to. However, the D2010 is not equal to D2011. The 2011 dividend is greater than the 2010 dividend. Okay, then we can see the form D2011. Okay, is equal to D2010. Okay, let me call it D2010 here. 
is equal to D twenty ten. Okay. However, they have grown one plus the growth. Okay. We need to uh, reflect the growth in the dividend. Okay. So one plus G. Okay. So over here the G is the growth in the dividend. Okay. The D2012, okay, the dividend paid in the year 2012 is greater than what was paid in the 2011. This it is growing, okay. You can see that it's given us uh, D2011, one plus G, okay. Which I could give you also, which actually the same as D2012, okay, D2012, okay. If you have to compare with the year 2010, D2012 and the year 2010, okay, this is actually years later, okay, 2012, 2010. This is two years later. Two years later, okay. So here, since the two years growth, okay, is equal to one plus G, but the growth have occurred in the year 2010, okay. So the growth here, uh, don't forget, let me just highlight. Here we have from 2012, from 2010 to 2012, we have two years. We have here 2011, uh, and of course we have the year 2012 itself, okay. So those are two years, okay. So therefore here, uh, two years later, we can square, okay? Well, this is two years later, okay? Here, 2011, uh, we have from 2010 to 2011, 2011 to 2012, two years later, okay? So we can square, okay? Yeah, we can see the same, that's D, let's say, to infinity, okay? Let's say to the nth year, okay? And the D paid in the nth year, the D paid in the nth year, okay? It will be equal to D, 2010, okay? However, don't forget, you have N years of growth, Okay, now this is simply 2010 to 2011 is here. Let me highlight. This is two years later only. Now this is two years. Okay, and 2010 to the nth year. Okay, this is n years. Okay, 2010 to the 20 d 20 oh, for the nth year is n years. Okay, they are simply therefore uh, we can say the d for the nth year is the d 2010 one plus g. Okay, to the power of n. Okay, because they are n years. Okay, n years are later. Okay. So if you observe, okay, we have been observing, <clears throat> let me use a different pen here. Uh, but here, they have D2010, okay? They have here D2010, they have here D2010, okay? So the D2010 in this context, and we can say that it is a constant, okay? Uh, in, a context, uh, in a context here, uh, we can say that it is our, the D2010 here is a constant. That is a constant here. The dividend was paid then in the year 2010, okay? In that context, let me just refer D2010 to be our D naught, okay? So the D2010 to be our D naught, okay? It's a constant, okay? And this constant is growing at G, okay? So this fixed dividend is growing at G. And here the G, okay, don't forget it's G the same. It's, it's, it's the same, it's all equal in all those years, okay? It's a constant, okay? So this dividend, okay, which is fixed every year, can become like our annuity, okay? It can become like our annuity. And this annuity, okay, look at the same. It is an annuity, because it's the same, okay? 2010, uh, 2010 here, and 2010 here is an annuity, okay? However, it is growing at a fixed rate, which is equal to G, okay? It is growing at a fixed rate, which is equal to G. And this is to infinity, okay? This D is greater as G to infinity. So since it is growing to infinity and the denominator is a fixed, is a, is a constant dividend, therefore, we can see that the present value, okay, the present value, okay, so the present value, the present value, sorry, <clears throat> the present value of this dividend, okay, dividend, the denominator here, which is fixed, is growing at one plus G, is growing at a constant rate, but what is the present value of this dividend to infinity? Okay. If it was not growing, if it was not growing, no, it was it was D naught, we divide by R. -E. If it was not growing, okay, like we have one you just done, okay. Uh, the case of no growth in the dividend, okay, the market value, the present value. However, it is growing, okay. However, now don't you know you have the now the growth factor, okay? You have the now the growth factor coming in, okay? So therefore, that's we have the D naught one plus G. Okay. However, don't forget. R, if we are to divide it by R, we are simply implying there's no growth in dividend. However, there's growth in dividend. So what do you do? We subtract the G, okay? We subtract uh, the G, okay? And that's we get the present value of, like, uh, the present value of dividend uh, growing at a constant rate to infinity, okay? So get here, the dividend is going to be the D naught, one plus G, okay? 
the RE is RE minus G. Okay, and that gives therefore our denominator. Okay, our numerator, okay, the present value of an entity growing at a constant rate. Just make reference to our formula. <clears throat> the present value of an entity growing to infinity is the entity one plus G R E minus G. Okay. Applying the same formula in this context, applying the same formula here, okay, look at the D naught here is our energy, one plus G, R E. So, okay, this should not be R E here. Let me just say this. <clears throat> should be R minus G, okay. In our context here, our R is the cost of equity. Our R here is the cost of equity, okay, minus G, okay. So, applying the same formula, but now here in the valuation of equity shares. Okay, so in case now our co main concern was to get the cost of equity or RE here. Okay, our main concern was to get the cost of equity RE here. Therefore, P naught is equal to D naught one plus G. <coughs> uh, we divide by RE minus G. I want us now to get the RE. Therefore, if we make RE the subject of equation, okay, so I'll just summarize it, but in case you try it out, okay, that'll be given us D naught one plus G, our numerator. We divide by P naught, and this count this, you don't forget here, you're trying, for example, to multiply. So here, look at, you want to multiply RE minus G, both sides. So here, the same thing happened, okay. Uh, we are multiplying, Re, Re minus G. Okay, the two cancel each other out. Okay, uh, similar these of these of uh, algebra. Okay, so Re here. Okay, so Re is equal to D naught one plus G. This is Re. Once we take it to uh, the right hand side, it becomes a plus. Okay, therefore plus G. Okay. And so simply, uh, we estimate the cost of equity, assuming okay that it is growing and growth is a uh, constant rate. Okay, so D naught one plus G uh, divided by P naught uh, plus G. Okay, so uh, we estimate the cost of equity in the case of growth uh, in and here this growth is constant; it's fixed. Okay, and it's fixed all the way to infinity. So that's our second case: the case of uh, uh, a constant growth in the dividend. Question? Okay, so there be no question. Uh, and now it's around, it's seven, okay. Uh, I don't want to ask, Mosotic, look, who is in class. Yes, look, how long should we take? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, okay, then. Yeah. Then we can meet at seven sixteen. Seven seven. Yes. Okay, then fair enough. Uh we can come back here at seven seventeen. Okay. So fair enough. See you then. Okay, welcome back for our second session. And the last thing that I, we were discussing uh, was on how we do get the cost of, of equity. Okay, and here we were discussing on how we get the cost of equity in case there is going to be a constant uh, growth in the dividend. Okay, we simply just forgot to conclude on what we were discussing. Is the cost of equity is equal to d naught one plus g. Okay. Uh, we divide by cost of equity minus G, okay, where RE is equal to cost of equity, cost of equity. And uh, we discuss that D naught, okay, and here you have to be very careful, D naught, uh, we see it is uh, the most least entry, okay, the most uh, least entry, paid dividend, paid dividend. Okay, the most recently uh, paid dividend. Okay, in, in this example, we are in the year 20, uh, 2020, 
2020, and the company has just paid even they has just paid dividend in the month of March. So our D not number four, the dividend that was paid uh, in the month of March, okay, year 2020. Okay, so D not uh, is the most recently okay uh, paid dividend. Okay, so if maybe this year the company has, if this year uh, the company is yet with the dividend, okay and the most business dividend paid was in the year 2019, then we use uh, the year 2019 as our D0, okay, as our D0, okay, D0 okay, is the most business paid uh, dividend, okay. If the company uh, has, is here to uh, pay the dividend, okay, and the last dividend paid uh, was in the year 2017, then the D2017, okay, uh, become therefore our D not okay, so D not is the most recently paid dividend. Okay, so get that in mind. Okay, so that you don't confuse uh, in future. And of course, you say that G is equal to the annual growth in the dividend. Okay, the annual uh, growth rate in dividend. Okay, so growth rate in dividend. Okay, <clears throat> then because uh, sorry, so here it is P not. So this. Formula C8 has an issue. So here is P naught. Plus G. Okay. And that's how we submit the cost recovery. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the cost recovery. Uh, if we assume an annual growth in dividend. And of course P naught is only for X dividend. Okay, X dividend uh, share price. The X dividend share uh, price. Okay, that's how we do get cost of equity under the case of growth in the dividend. Okay, okay, I guess you can attempt a question. Okay, where you mean now to apply uh, this model, okay, in estimating uh, what the cost of equity should be. Okay, so you can attempt a question now. <clears throat> Okay, so we come back to our notes. Okay, so this slide is simply uh, telling us what we already discussed. Okay, and the summary of it is here. Okay, that cost equity uh, is giving us uh, D1 divided P naught plus G. Now, actually, because here D1 has come up, okay, so D1 has come up here. Okay, don't forget the D naught. Okay, let me just say D twenty eight. Our D not our our uh, D not was twenty eight. Okay, so our D not, sorry, our D not was equal to okay, uh, D or D twenty eleven. Sorry, let me let's see. So our D twenty okay. Okay, so our D is here. Our D twenty eleven, okay, was D twenty ten, okay, one plus G. Okay, uh, we did see our D twenty ten was our D naught, okay, was our beginning here. So here you have uh, D. Let me just call twenty eleven to be to be one. So D one. Okay, is equal to and D10 was my okay, uh, D0, so D0, okay, one plus G. Okay, therefore, if you remember that the cost of equity, okay, is equal to D0, one plus G, we divide by RE minus G. Okay, so sorry, we divide by P0 plus G. Okay, now if you observe here, okay. And if you observe uh, here, we have D not one plus G. Okay, uh, we have D not one plus G. However, it is possible for us to replace the D not one plus G uh, using this formula. Okay, because we have the same here, D not one plus G. So this is the same for this is the same we have here. Okay, they have cost equity. Therefore, will be equal to uh, we can replace it by D one. We divide by P not uh, plus G. Okay, so D not uh, plus G. Okay. 
And that's how uh, we have ended up with this formula here we have. Okay, so D1, we do a P0 uh, plus G. Okay, so there seem to be a question uh, raised here. So let me check them out. <coughs> yes, Louisa. Louisa? Yes. Yes, sorry. Mm -hmm. Louisa? You went mute. What happened? Lisa, it's back to you. Hi. Um, we are not able to see what you're working on on your screen. Oh, you can't see my screen? Yeah. Oh. We are on the previous thing that you were doing. Wow. OK. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Now you're on the slide. It's OK. Oh, OK. Let me just repeat it then. If you didn't see that, let me just repeat it. Lois. Lois, you lost your hand was up. Was it the same problem? Yeah, same issue. Ah, OK, OK. OK, let me just repeat it then. Sorry for that. So I'm saying that here, the cost of equity, OK, in our final formula here, in our notes here, uh, we have D0, OK? So here, so this is our final formula, more or less, OK? That you have the cost of equity being equal to D1 divided by P0 plus G. So you say the cost of equity is equal to uh, D1, we divide P0 plus G, okay? So I was trying to say, let me just wrap this off. Okay, that the D2011, okay, if you remember, was equal to D2010, okay, one plus G, okay? So assuming that our beginning year, okay, the year that you are in, in the, is year twenty, is the year twenty ten, okay, is the year twenty uh, ten, okay, then here we can say our twenty ten is our D naught, okay, the beginning, okay, the most recently paid dividend I was paid in the year twenty eleven, okay, therefore this comes for uh, our D naught, okay, well actually, so that okay, let me just put this to be year twenty uh, twenty one, okay, so that it makes more sense, okay. So this is uh, okay. So this is year 20, uh, 2020, okay. And this is next year, okay. Is next year 2021, okay. Therefore, since we are in the current year, so it I mean in this year, what has to be paid? Okay, we said in the month of March, okay. In the month of March, the company has already paid the dividend. So the dividend paid in the 2020 uh, in March become therefore our D note, the most visitory paid dividend. Because of therefore our D note. Okay. The amount is going to be in, in next year, one year from now, D1, okay, is equal to D note one plus G. Okay. If we, uh, our formula, okay, the one we just did conclude was cost of equity is equal to uh, D note one plus G. R E uh, <coughs> Okay, was equal to P naught plus G. Okay, so here on the top of this formula, we have D naught plan plus G being our numerator, which is equal to also what you have here. Okay, therefore, you can replace the formula and say that our cost of equity, okay, is simply equal to D1, we divide by uh, P naught plus G. Okay, where D1 is what is going to be there in the year 2021, our D 2021. Our D2020, okay, is what has been paid for this year. So therefore, our cost of equity can be given as, okay, the cost of equity can be given as a D for next year, the D2021, okay, we divide by P0, the current uh, dividend per share, uh, plus the growth in the dividend, okay. So don't go, it's the same one, the same thing, uh, but all the time you got from a different perspective, okay. I hope that's clear. Clear. <clears throat> and that's why we estimate the cost of equity in the case of the growth in dividend. Okay, then we can apply. Okay, we is the P naught. Okay. So we said P P naught is equal to uh, 
So don't get P not here, we said is equal to the X D1 is market price per share. Uh, D1 is the next year dividend, okay? Uh, G is a growth, the annual growth in dividend, and R is the cost of equity. Okay, I think we have uh, discussed all that. Okay, so more or less is what you have here in our next slide. Okay. Then you can do a question. Okay, you can attempt a question. Uh, and now I want us, we apply, okay? So I want us, we apply the formula that we have just learned, okay? So this is a question, okay? But I want to tweak it, and this will come, therefore, uh, come dividend. Okay, just a slight tweak, okay? So go through it, and then we attempt together. Okay, I presuppose that you have done something and you don't confirm well how it should be done. Okay, so in this case, uh, there's a company here that has just paid a dividend uh, of 10 cents. Okay, so sometimes you also be very careful uh, with the tens being used. Okay, so this company has paid. Okay, that's past tense. Okay, uh, so there's no way that can be D1. Okay, don't forget D1 is dividend of being paid in, uh, in a year's time. Okay, so be careful with the tens being used. Okay, so this the best can be is D naught. Okay, the company expects to pay uh, the due to grow at uh, five percent per annum. Uh, the company current share price uh, is one point zero five come dividend. Okay, so you make a create uh, the cost of equity uh, for this company. Okay, so you meant to get the cost of equity uh, for this company. Okay, we said P naught. We didn't mention. Okay, let me go back to uh, to my board. Okay, so my board. So you see that here the company uh, has just paid dividend uh, equal to sorry, let me just go uh, ten cents. Okay, uh, the growth is five percent. Okay. Okay, so here growth is equal to five percent. Okay, uh, we were told the company has paid has just paid dividend, so that's become a four D note. Okay, our most recently paid dividend okay uh, is equal to so ten cents. Okay, so it's equal to uh, ten cents, so zero point one of a dollar. Okay, and we've been told that uh, the company. Current share price is 1.05 come dividend. Okay. So come dividend. Okay. So come div uh, share price is equal to 1.05 of a dollar. Okay. So let me just let's check someone to help us out. Alex. Alex. Hey, Alex went away. Asma. Asma. Uh, Asma. Asma, I can't hear you. Okay, wait. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Hello? Yes, yes. Can you hear you now? Okay. Let me just put my mark. Uh, yeah. no. You want more time? Yeah? You want more time? I can't hear well. What are you saying? You want more time, or you have an answer already? Oh? You have an answer already. For which question? The one we are doing right now? It's the one we are doing right now. Oh, okay, wait. I haven't done the question. You haven't done the question? Okay, let me ask someone else. But attempt it, for sure. Okay, okay. Okay.
innocent 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 Even as you went quiet. Kami. Kami. Kami, I can't hear you. Hey, come in. Is it a hard question or what? People are going mute. Faith. Faith, your hand was up. Where have you gone? I think it was Faith Jeroge. <clears throat> Yes, Faith. 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 Hey, what happened? Yes, Asma. Let me unmute you. Asma. Let me try. Okay. Uh, we are looking for the cost of cost of equity so what i did was i used the formula d naught into bracket one plus g over p naught plus g sorry you did use formula ke is equals to d naught yes is equal to d naught so ke just a minute go ahead into bracket one plus g over one p naught over p naught Plus G. Plus G, okay, fair enough. Apply the formula now. Uh, and then D naught is 0 0.1. So D naught is equal to 0 0.1. Times 1.05. And the growth is 5%, so they will multiply by 1.05, 1 plus G, sure. Uh, and then, I'm not sure whether we are supposed to use um, dividend of 1.05, but I did that. You so use 1.05, so divide by 1.05. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not sure about that, but uh, you're supposed to use X dividend. Okay, continue. We're going to correct you, don't know why. Plus, okay, mm. plus, plus, plus G. Plus G, which is how much? 0 0.05. 0 0.05, okay. Uh, okay. Thank, you. thank you, Asma, for that. Thank you, Asma. So you got how much? 15%. 15? Yeah. 15%, okay. Thank you, Asma, for that. So, thank you for that. <clears throat> So faith also got 15%, okay? Thank you for that. So here, don't forget the P-note we're using. Okay. You have to be very careful because the P-note we're using is, if I refer back to our question, okay, which is this one. Okay, this is our question, okay? Don't forget the P-note, okay? The current share price is 1.05 come dividend, okay? 1.05 come dividend, okay? No, there's no, you can use that share price, okay? So you need to get the X dividend, okay? You want to convert A from being come dividend, okay, to X dividend, okay? From come dividend uh, to X dividend, okay? So in this case, therefore, we need to go back to my board here. <clears throat> so here, so you cannot use 1.05. Why? Because it is come dividend. It is not the P naught, it is not the X dividend. So we need to get the, uh, X dealer share price. Okay, so the X dealer share price. Okay, so uh, the X share price therefore is going to give us the current dealer share price 1.05 minus the DPS. 
Okay, we need to subtract, we need to remove the dividend. Okay, so minus uh, the developer share. Okay, it's giving, it's giving us 1.05. Okay, minus the dividend. The, in this in this context, the most recently paid dividend. Okay, which in this case is going to be it was equal to 0 0.1. Okay, so minus 0 0.1 to give us therefore the x dividend equal to 0 0.95. Okay, so 0 0.95 can for our x dividend share price. Okay, therefore. If you want to apply the formula, therefore, to be uh, RE is D naught, which is 0 0.1 times 1 plus the growth, 0 0.5, uh, divided by here. Don't forget here now, we can use we use now our X dividend, 0 0.95, okay, plus the growth, 0 0.05, okay. And that, therefore, will give us, therefore, uh, what should be the cost of equity, okay, what should be uh, the cost of equity. Okay. Don't forget, if it is come dividend, then you must get that's a must. You must get uh, the X dividend uh, share price. Okay. So let me get an answer from one of you. <clears throat> Naomi. Naomi. Naomi, you went quiet. Evelyn. Evelyn. Um, uh, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, 16.05%. 16 16.05. Yeah. That's way. Yeah. Okay, 16.05 percent. Okay, uh, that's this is from Evelyn. Okay, just confirm. Stacy, Stacy, uh, Kirui, Stacy. Stacy, you went quite also. So we have Stacy, there are other Stacy, Stacy Ki, uh, Kihuri. Stacy, there are Stacy. Got the same answer. You got the same answer. Yeah, sixteen point one no. percent. Okay, I rounded off. Okay, okay, fair enough. Okay, that's good. Okay, thank you. Okay, so maybe to confirm that that was maybe the right answer. Okay, sixteen point zero five percent counted for our cost of equity. Okay, uh, cost of equity. Okay, don't forget in this case here. Okay, so. Okay, in the if the question you have to go with the original question. Okay, don't forget this question. I've just tweaked uh, from being come D from being X dividend from being X dividend uh, to come dividend. So in case you have to go with the original answer question, okay, then this would have been our answer. Okay, the fifteen percent if the payment was X dividend share price. Okay, but after tweaking the question, okay, then there's gather for our, uh, our our cost of equity. Okay, the sixteen point zero five. Percent okay, and that's how we estimate the cost of equity uh, using those two models. Okay, uh, the, using the that one, that one model. Okay, uh, using that one model, the dividend uh, valuation model. Okay, I hope it's uh, clear to all of you. Okay, <clears throat> now when it comes to okay, you know, this slide, I think I already mentioned it. Okay. Uh, if the share price is come dividend, then of course you need to work something out. Okay, so you can you can't go ahead and use it the way it is. Okay, uh, you must get the X dividend uh, share price. Okay, so we simply you just remove the dividend. Okay, uh, and in this context we use the most recently paid dividend. Okay, if you're not told that uh, the company pays uh, in the next two weeks, in the next three weeks. Okay, so in case you be told that what happens in the next near future. Okay, mostly going to be a maximum of a month. Okay. Uh, so we do remove what is being paid, for example, in the next two weeks, three weeks, 
uh, maybe the next one month, okay? Assume the share price is trading with the dividend, okay? Don't forget, come dividend implies the share price, the value of the share in the market, uh, trading with the anticipation of receiving the dividend, okay? That's called come dividend, okay? So in case the question is silent to tell us about what is going to be, what dividend is going to be received in the future, then we simply assume or we simply use the most recently paid dividend, like in the question uh, that we have just concluded. Okay, so that's on uh, estimating the cost of equity uh, uh, using the dividend uh, valuation model. Okay, maybe the next question could be okay, now how do we estimate the G? Okay, how do we get uh, the growth in the dividend? Okay, how do we get the G? Now we estimate the cost of we estimate the growth the annual growth in the dividend uh, using two models. Okay, using uh, not model as per se. Okay, uh, actually one is only a model. Okay, uh, using two methods. Okay, let me just call them methods. Okay, so we do use two methods. Okay, when it comes to uh, estimating the annual growth rate in the dividend. Okay, so the first one. Okay, is what called the extrapolation method. Okay, here uh, yeah, simply we are assuming. Okay. That what has been the growth in the past uh, maybe three years? Okay, what has been the growth in the past three years? Then we can assume that going into the future, uh, the same same growth that we have experienced over the past, for example, five years, shall be the dividend uh, to be experienced into the infinity. Okay, so simply extrapolating the past into the future. Okay, so in case in the past two years uh, the growth rate has been three percent then we can assume going into the future, uh, the annual growth rate shall be 3% also. Okay, so simply the assumption uh, that we're making extrapolating the past into the future, okay? Then the next one is also, then another method is called uh, the Gordon's approximation method. So this one is called, the second method is called uh, the Gordon's, okay? Uh, growth approximation method, growth approximation method approximation okay uh, method the Gordon's approximation or simply the retention model okay or simply simply if it was uh, the retention model okay so if it was uh, the retention uh, model okay that was the second method okay for now uh, let's first discuss the first method okay uh, determine the extrapolating the past into the future the extrapolation uh, method okay so in this method okay don't don't come the formula okay it's simply a straight it's simply an easy method okay okay let me explain through my uh, my board okay which i think it's a bit easier so let me just use my board so the extrapolation method okay extrapolation method okay extrapolation method so here simply what you're doing is that if you remember we say that the dividend to be paid in the year 2021 okay is equal to uh, d 2020 okay uh, one plus g okay therefore how do we get a G? Assume that you do you do know uh, what we expect to be paid in the year 2021. Okay, uh, we know what is getting paid today. Okay, therefore we can just make G. Okay, so here simply here uh, we can make the G of the subject of the formula. Okay, so you make G uh, the subject of the formula. Therefore G will be equal to D 2021. We divide by D 2020 minus one. Okay, but simply therefore uh, become the for our annual growth in the dividend. Okay. We are simply making G uh, the subject of formula. So G will be D2021 divided by D2010 uh, minus one. Okay. What if now we have, we had for example, three years, okay? We had three years of growth, okay? So D2023, okay, is equal to D2020, okay? One plus G, and three years later, okay? To the power of three, okay? To the power of three, okay? Uh, therefore, if you have to make G the subject of formula, Therefore, G will be equal to D2023. We divide by D2010. However, don't forget this growth has been achieved over three years. Okay, so what do you do? You get the uh, the uh, the cube root. Okay, so in this context, because these are three years, you get the cube root. Okay, so therefore, cube root one over three, the power one over three minus one. Okay, and simply that we get the G in case there have been three years. Okay. 
Now, what if now here there have been, let's say, n years, okay? There have been n years. Therefore, d, n years, okay? d naught, 1 plus g, the power of n, okay? So, therefore, this case, g will be equal to uh, d on the nth year, uh, d naught, the power of the nth, the uh, nth root, okay? Uh, minus 1, okay? That's simply is how we do get uh, the annual growth rate yield by extrapolation, okay? By extrapolation, okay? I think is how we, we get the growth, okay? So in case for, for example, you know, from a formula, okay, uh, we get the G to be, let's say, 8% uh, to achieve over the past five years, okay? Then we can assume that also going into the future, uh, maybe the, into infinity, okay, we assume the G to be equal to also what you obtain, the 8% that have been experienced in the last three years, well, the last five years, okay? So simply extrapolating the past into the future. I hope it's very uh, clear to all of you, okay? Okay, and that's how uh, we estimate. So don't worry about this formula you have here, okay? Just simply, uh, G is equal to, okay? So this formula just concluded, but G is equal to uh, D and the uh, D naught, okay? And root minus one. Okay, that's simply is how we do estimate the cost uh, of equity. Now we estimate the annual growth rate in dividend. Okay, so let's apply that formula uh, to an example here, for example. Okay, so we apply to an example formula. Okay, so go through question one. We attempt uh, together. Okay, so we do that. The company pays a dividend of two cents. Okay, then five years five years ago, okay, uh, the company then paid twenty cents. Okay, so we are simply meant to uh, estimate what should be uh, the annual growth rate. Okay, so back to my board here. Okay, so we do that in the year twenty. Okay, so just okay. Assume that the company, okay, today has paid, uh, so let me just call this 2020, okay, and five years ago, 2015, okay, so those are five years ago, therefore, the fifth root, okay, minus one, so the company has paid that two cents, five years ago, the company paid uh, 20 cents, okay, therefore, you get the fifth root, okay, minus one, and that therefore will become therefore our G, okay, that become therefore our G. Okay, but simply is how we do estimate the annual growth rate in dividend. Okay, don't forget the growth uh, came all the way from uh, 20 cents all the way to 32 cents. But this growth has been achieved not over one year, okay, it has been achieved over five years. The vote is estimated annual growth rate in the dividend. Okay, just a quick one <clears throat> to get an answer from someone. Dear. Dear. I'm still working on it. No, not yet. I'm still working on it. Not yet. Yes, not yet.
Javier, you got it? Mm. Not yet. Now, So as there is working out, okay. Let's just I get a confirmation. Leah. Leah. Yes, Leah. Hello. Yes. So I can't really see the board, so I'm not sure if I put the the right figures. Oh, you can't see the board. Hey, can they ever see the board? I hope the others can see the board. Let me just confirm for someone where they can see. Asma, can you see my board? Yeah, yeah. Well, wow, okay, I think Leah has an issue. Oh, okay. Sorry for that, Leah. You can't see the board. Okay. Mm. Is someone who had the link finished? Doing it. Okay. Yes, someone. Yes, Esther. Um, Esther. I got nine point eight six percent. Nine point eight six percent. Nine point eight six percent. Okay. Thank you for that, Esther. Luke. Yes. Yes. Uh, nine point eight six percent. Okay, now 9.8 is your same, therefore, because therefore our annual growth rate. Thank you, Luke. Okay, so 9.86 percent, and therefore, annual growth rate. Okay, that simply is how we estimate the annual growth rate in the dividend. Okay, and then just quickly, okay, we can attempt number two. Okay, and here for the number two, okay, this sorry, let me share it. <coughs> Okay, so that was example one, okay, which you got 9.86%. Okay, so we assume that this is what has been achieved over the past five years. Okay, therefore, going forward into the future, we assume every year the dividend uh, shall be growing at the same rate, okay, and shall be growing at 9.86%, the same, same rate that they have grown for the past five years. Okay, in the example two here, the one you have here, so here, uh, the same thing is applying here, okay. However, we have year, for example, year 2020 or the year 2010 all the way to the year 2014. Okay, so you want to get annual growth rate. Okay, for those uh, for the period between year 2010 all the way to the year 2014. Okay, now what if now? Okay, in this context, we ignore the years in between. Okay, what I mean by that is that all these years in between. Okay, so all these years uh, in between the two extreme period, we ignore them. Okay, so you want to take the extremes. In this case. 2010, uh, 2014, okay, 2010 to the year 2014, okay, there's a quick one. Uh, the D2014, okay, we divide by uh, D2010, okay, so D2014 uh, all the way to the year D, uh, uh, 2010, all the way to the year 2014, okay. The years of growth here, okay, so it is growing from 2010 to 2014, those are four years of growth, okay, therefore this gained the power of a quarter, okay. Minus one. Okay, so simply it will be equal to uh, fourteen point five cents. Okay, uh, we divide by ten cents. Okay, and the power of a quarter uh, minus one to get for our annual growth in the dividend. Okay, which is how much? 
So it grew all the way from 10 uh, to 14.5, and this growth has been achieved over four years. Okay, therefore, the power of a quarter are uh, minus one. And get how much? Who haven't talked today? Sharon. Sharon. Yes. Uh, what do you get to be the, the growth for uh, the annual growth per year? 9.73. Sorry, 9.73. 9.73%. Okay. So 9.73%. Okay, that's good. 9%. Just confirm. Uh, we have here Lois. Lois? Yes, not the same. 9.73%. I think. Look. Okay, we get 9.73%. Therefore, uh, to become our annual growth rate. Okay, and that's how you estimate the annual growth rate. Okay, by the use of the extrapolation method. Simply uh, extrapolate the past into the future. The past into uh, the future. Okay. Yes, and that was it for therefore for today's class. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll save. Okay, I uh, will uh, save this video. Okay, I will uh, then I will forward it to you uh, for in case you don't have a recap of what we were discussing. Okay, uh, don't forget you sign the register. Okay, uh, admission number and your name. Admission number and your name, your official name, okay? And as much as possible, don't forget as you enter into the class, okay, you uh, enter using your official name, okay? I could see some iPhone, I don't know what, anyway. So hey, don't forget to enter using your official name, okay? For the sake of trying to know who is in class, okay? Don't forget this class, it's you who have paid for it, okay? So we should not be having strangers in class, okay? So enter using uh, your official name. So your name and your admission number, okay? So do that. Uh, in the chat. Okay, thank you enough. That was it for this class. Then we can meet on Wednesday. Okay, then see you then. Bye, enjoy uh, your evening.